This episode is sponsored by Aruba, a Hewlett Packard enterprise company, and their partner, Forgone Solutions. Looking for a small business Wi Fi network that provides your customers with an outstanding experience? One that's easy to set up and manage with a simple app? Meet Aruba Instant On. Visit www.4gon.co.uk to find out more. Welcome to this latest edition of the First Voice podcast, brought to you by First Voice magazine, the official flagship magazine of the Federation of Small Businesses, and the go-to podcast for news, tips, and important information for small businesses. This episode is brought to you in partnership with Aruba, a Hewlett-Packard enterprise company, and partner Forgone Solutions, the leading worldwide B2B distributor of wireless communications equipment. Today, we will be discussing how small businesses, particularly those in the hospitality and leisure sector, but all businesses that have on-site customer interactions, can adapt to meet the changing needs and demands of customers post-pandemic. The lockdown period has created many shifts in working patterns, with many more people looking to work remotely and to be connected wherever they are, while customer habits have also changed from greater demand for outdoor space to increased use of local venues. Put all this together, and it means today's restaurants, bars, coffee shops, yoga studios, exercise businesses, children's play centers, and all businesses that host customers on site are having to adapt from making more outdoor space available to ensuring ongoing connectivity for those who want to work from the venues as well as socialize uh, right through to, to meeting changing demands in peak times as well. So today we will explore how you can adapt your business uh, to meet these changing customer desires. To do that, I'm pleased to say I'm joined by two people expertly placed to share their experience and knowledge. Uh, Ollie Sears is from North Star Coffee Roasters, which is a wholesale coffee provider that also has its own coffee shops, uh, which cater for plenty of people looking to come in and work while enjoying a coffee, as well as those just looking to relax and socialize. Uh, meanwhile, Charlie Harvey is Small Business Development Manager at Aruba, which provides simple, smarter Wi-Fi for small business and those working from home, uh, meaning Charlie is also ideally placed to talk us through the trends he is seeing from customers across the country. Ollie and Charlie, thanks so much for joining us. Hello. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks, guys. Well, let's dive straight into um, the questions. Ollie, I wonder if you'd just start by giving us, a, a, I guess, a sort of quick 30-second overview of your business and exactly what it is you guys do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're, uh, as you said, a wholesale coffee provider, uh, but we primarily work, I suppose, with a, with a wide range of wholesale clients in, in different sectors, all pretty much in you know hospitality and, and leisure or retail environments. Um, really, really customer service-focused business. Um, and um, quite rightly, yeah, we're in, we're in a good position to kind of talk about how businesses have adapted through the um, pandemic because we've literally seen over 100 clients, you know, having to be forced into those adaptations. Um, and yeah, we, we're basically existing to try and keep the humanity in coffee and put the uh, the ethics back in where it was uh, previously been lost. And uh, and that's a testing uh, battle anyway. Uh, but amidst the pandemic, uh, became yeah a, a new set of challenges uh, that a lot of businesses have adapted really well to. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for that quick overview. As you say, um, you know, coffee chains, uh, coffee shops, other outlets have been massively disrupted by the pandemic. That has a big impact on, on, on your business as well. Just just share some of the challenges that you guys have faced um, and, and, and how you've survived that, that lockdown period. I mean, it was a huge, huge blow to customer service, as you can imagine, um, taking, you know, taking a normally uh, face-to-face, very friendly, welcoming environment and making it PPE-ridden uh, and, uh, and, and mask, uh, <laughs> mask-wearing. So a lot of things changed with the actual style of, of customer service. And we had to really, I suppose, adapt the, the, the way that people interact um, with one another to keep some kind of uh, yeah, friendly value to, to the whole industry which was obviously extremely challenging and don't get me wrong it took a little bit of time but we um you know we, we've 
ourselves and, and with our clients, we've been able to kind of face the challenges that have, that have gone to kind of the retail sector and, and social distancing and PPE um, and try and keep a little bit of humanity in there. Um, and it's, it's mainly been around, well, how do you change your actual offering? You know, how do you change your style of service? And, um, and, and what do you begin to do or that, that you maybe never did in the past? Uh, do you change your product lines and, and, and almost like adapt sectors a little bit uh, to meet the, the changing and growing demand for different things, particularly kind of um, take out goods, right? You know, and um, work from home related uh, situations that people were forced into. So yeah, it's been a really uh, challenging time, but then, and as you can imagine, mainly around the, uh, just the, the PPE restrictions of the pandemic and the, um, the actual business restrictions, trade restrictions. Yeah, fantastic. And Charlie, you know, you're out in the field all the time talking to small businesses and helping them um, stay connected to their to their customers and, and, and connected in the sense that they can continue op- to operate no matter what the environment. Um, is that a similar trend that you're seeing across small business? You know, have they really, really had to, to revisit their business models and look at how they stay relevant during the lockdown period? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Ollie's doing a lot of similar things to what uh, the wider customer base that I'm talking to are doing as well. I mean, the last year's taught us a lot about how things can be done differently. It almost forced it in in some senses. Um, and things that people are considering now are how how they use their space differently, how they work differently. You know, we're working from home, um, and and that's going to continue for for quite a long time. Um, and now people are starting to think about what they're doing for the future, right? So how do they bounce back from this year they've had where they've maybe implemented things that they thought would be short term, but might have worked out like take out coffee, uh, like using their outdoor spaces a bit more effectively. Uh, and we're kind of seeing a change to how people work, but also how they serve their customers as well. So a lot of businesses are looking at that um, across the board in, in all sectors, not just hospitality. Yeah, fantastic. And Ollie, can I'd like to come back and explore some of the specifics, perhaps in a little bit, little more detail of of what you guys have been doing, um, especially as we've entered this phase of of beginning to open up again, and with further easing of restrictions uh, on the not too distant horizon. Now, what are some of the specific specific things you've been looking at as a business, and um, you know, what are some of the things that that the coffee chains you're involved with have been doing? Um, I mean, as um, as has been touched on upon, uh, upon already, we've we've seen a lot of kind of outdoor spaces being built um, in order to kind of better use um, retail retail uh, space available and, and monetize uh, the space that you are allowed to use under trade restrictions. So that's been a tremendously uh, positive thing that will hopefully last long into the future. Um, you know, like outdoor spaces have always been uh, lacking in the UK compared to when you're enjoying uh, coffee and leisure places uh, abroad. But now with covered outdoor spaces, uh, cafes are going to probably feel a little bit more adaptable for, for longer and, and certainly more sustainable for longer. Uh, so that's been a huge one, outdoor space utilisation and the construction of those uh, sorts of things. We've also just seen people turning from, say, like uh, you know an in-house uh, brunch service into more of a grocery offering. You know, uh, the, the ingredients they were once combining into kind of dishes on a plate uh, and now available for sale and, and, and almost operating more like a, a small grocer instead of a coffee shop or a, a brunch place. So we've seen great adaptations like that, which have been really, really uh, well received by, by customers. And um, in turn, things like uh, things like redesigning a shop to suit that growing and changing demand. But it's, it's really been... Um, it, it's really been signaled to us that that's the way to kind of handle the changing customer demand as well, because although it's been forced upon them, you know, do, you know uh, monitoring the trends that you're allowed to kind of keep up with and the ones you're going to have to kind of ditch uh, alongside restrictions and easing restrictions, um, that continual adaptation is being really, really well received. And um, and we think, you know, to be honest, that's been a key in, in a lot of businesses surviving and, and some even thriving in the pandemic. Yeah, Charlie, again, you know, as someone who's out there in the market talking to Different types of businesses, not just coffee chains, but lots of businesses that have customers come into their locations, onto their sites. Um, presumably, you've seen lots of those sort of uh, innovative adaptations as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we've seen almost some businesses clean she- clean sheets, how they um, kind of operate and, and transform from being like that coffee shop that, that only serves coffee to, to doing exactly what Ollie's saying, where... You know, they sell bits and then they they also sell 
ingredients to go into those things. But I mean, we've also seen people really now starting to ramp up and get ready for the summer, um, make the maximize maximizing that time for the British great staycation that everyone's going to have to go on this year and kind of making sure they're ready for um, where typically maybe summer might slow down for some industries. It's, it's actually going to ramp up a lot um, with, with people going on holiday in the UK and that covers all sorts of stuff. You know, they're sorting out new menus, they're hiring staff, training these new staff, they're changing their opening times, sorting out how they work their customer experience. So, you know, we've seen the rise of um, app-based menus and things like that kind of appear out of necessity. But you know what? They might just stay because how great is that if you can just have a little app on your phone to to get hold of the menu and then also in some cases place an order, right? It takes away um, some of the some of the stress sometimes if it's really busy of getting hold of a hold of a waiter or, or whatever. So there's some things that have kind of been put in place by necessity that we think will that we think will stay. And we've seen businesses talking like they will stay. And that kind of brings with it um a focus on what they're going to do for their infrastructure to kind of support that and how we kind of how we drive further out of that. So I think there's a lot of things that a lot of businesses are doing that are were knee-jerk reactions and kind of fixing problems that they immediately had in front of them, but they're now absolutely focusing those and how they can implement those further and longer into their business cycle and kind of help keep them going um, through what may come in the next year or, or even the future uh, beyond that, right? So really interesting times for a lot of these companies. Yeah, talking about those sort of um, use of outdoor areas, Ollie, you touched on that a little bit in in what you were saying, and obviously, Charlie, you've you've just discussed that a bit. Ollie, you know, from your point of view, what's the demand for those outdoor areas? Um, presumably, during lockdown, businesses had to adapt with lockdown areas. We had a period where you could only use outdoor spaces and couldn't come inside. Um, is there? Do, do you see ongoing demand for those spaces, particularly as we move into the summer period? I guess um, is that something you expect to to stick around for the longer term? Businesses having to provide more outdoor areas. Absolutely. I mean, to be frank, we we lacked it a lot in the UK um, in the past, and it was a, a really kind of cornerstone way of of serving people in in other countries, especially in uh, in Europe. And lacking that in the UK was a big. Uh, a big issue in the past, you know, because when the weather was nice, we didn't have anything to cater for it. But now with the outdoor spaces, I, I personally feel that they're, they're going to allow a lot more uh, sustainability for these businesses and, and, and ultimately more covers. You know, when you're in a kind of bums on seats kind of uh, style of service with restaurants and coffee shops, you, you, you know, more seats is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and adapt, keeping this kind of adapted form of service um, and thriving, thriving with it, I think having your outdoor space available just gives customers more choice you know yes you might have to interact a little differently out there and, and the service style might change a little bit but with good connectivity and uh, and the technological innovations that are uber and, uh, and and similar companies are responsible for you you find actually it's quite easy to, to cater for an outdoor space particularly if you have got an app based menu and you're not constantly requiring those extra staff members to kind of monitor and manage them um, I think if we are, we're able to kind of be confident and explain to customers why we're keeping these sorts of things and why we might uh, keep using these technological innovations that we've got and gained through the pandemic, through this forced adaptation. Um, I think the outdoor spaces can be thriving almost year round, especially if they're covered and um, on, a, on a personal level and, and particularly with the people that I'm seeing milling around at customer sites and our own sites, it's um, it's something well received. Um, even when the temperature does cool down a little bit and the weather's a little bit less than ideal, if you're, if you're covered from it, it's like uh, the conservatory at home or it's the same sort of effect as watching the rain outside. You, you, you know, you feel like you've got a win. Yeah, it sounds like we're hearing that there's increased demand. Well, we've been forced a little bit into demand for outdoor spaces, but it, it feels like there's going to be continued demand for that as we move forward. Um, Charlie, this isn't just about coffee shops, though, is it? You know, we mentioned this a little bit in the in the intro. There's a whole swathe of businesses um, different types of small businesses that that have reason to provide connectivity, whether inside or outside, um, to meet some of those changing customer demands. Things like, you know, wanting to to go to a, a bar and do a bit of work on your laptop or being able to stay connected to your small business if you're socialising or having lunch, for example. Yeah, I think connectivity uh, is just good all round, isn't it, right? You can You can, if you think of it, outdoors you're thinking about um yeah giving that outdoor coverage so that those 
basic stuff for the business, right? Where your point of sale device still works when it's outside. If you're in a bit of a poor connection, poor, you know, what um, mobile signal area, um, app based menus working for those those things. Obviously, it's important that the the device that someone's trying to view that on actually can connect to the internet and can get hold of it. Um, and then there's other stuff about just making sure that the customer can get onto it because. I've done it where you go for a meeting with someone, this was pre-pandemic, but it's the issue still stands, right? You go for a meeting over lunch, you have lunch, but then you need to leave afterwards because you've got a bunch of calls or a bunch of emails and some stuff that you need to do later in the day, which means that you can't stay on site because the Wi-Fi is not strong enough to hold a, a Zoom call or, or in some cases they didn't, they didn't provide that, right? So I had to leave to continue my day job. If you can implement something that means that I could sit and happily work, tap away on my emails for the next two or three hours. I'm a long, I'm going to sit on that seat for longer. I'm going to buy more drinks, buy some snacks as I'm working. And actually that kind of just helps to, to increase the overall, overall revenue for the business. Right. So that's, that's a really good point there. Uh, and when you mentioned your other point about other businesses and how, how it kind of has affected them, I think there's, there's loads of use cases for outdoor um, access points to kind of give connectivity, whether that is, um, like being able to to just check in when you're sat having a pub on a Saturday to make sure your small business is still ticking over, whether that is um, being able to just give connectivity to people so that when they when they pop in to to grab something they can quickly check on uh, whatever they need to be looking at. I think there's loads of cases where you need to be able to provide that, and I think with work from home policies being bigger, social interaction um, is going to narrow down, and therefore going to a place like a, a pub or a bar or or even a coffee shop, as we mentioned earlier, um, to to meet with colleagues is obviously really important. So so having a reliable network that means that people can know that when they turn up, they can have the meeting, um, do all the information, do all the work they need to do, and then also kind of back off uh, to their normal work once they're finished with that particular meeting. It's just going to attract customers um, to your business. So I think it's really important to to think about. Yeah, that's a really good point. So it feels like we're getting sort of two core messages here. One, that connectivity is, as we as we increasingly use our space differently, you know, as um, demand from customers is uh, to come in and perhaps, you know, combine socialising with work, but, you know, jump on a call. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of core messages. One is that um, connectivity is essential for business processes, making sure you can still take payments outside. And, you know, we've all been in a, a bar or restaurant where the, the waiter or waitress is sort of holding the card reader in the air, trying to, trying to get a better signal for your, your payments go through. One is to, to streamline and smooth um, that process. Um, and the other is to ensure ongoing connectivity to enable customers and clients to do the things that they want to do on site, which might be, you know, using greater bandwidth to do a, a Zoom call, or et cetera. Is that, is that a fair summary, Ollie, of the sorts of things you're seeing day to day? Definitely. And, and, and to add to that, like, the, firstly, that summary is absolutely excellent. I mean, that, that is exactly right. We've all met those kind of um, service-based problems that come from this. And, and what I particularly like about the connectivity factor being kind of boosted and hopefully innovated across uh, more and more kind of small businesses is that it then takes that barrier out of the way. So when you are standing there and you're having conversations with staff members about the poor connectivity or, and you're joking around, you've got a bit of small talk around that, that can be replaced now by like proper customer service. You know, you know we might be, you know, we've, we've missed a lot of so social interaction with the pandemic. Um, and this now brings back that opportunity to, okay, we don't have to cover the, the obvious card reader issues. So now we can actually talk about, well, how was your food? You know, are you staying for another drink? You know, and you can, you can start to build in the other business practices that you you probably wanted to spend more time on the whole time. You know, you're proud of what you sell. You want to talk to about talk about what you sell. You want to talk about your supplies. Um, you know, why what you do is great. And, and you don't get time for that if you're dealing with uh, connectivity issues. You don't get time with that. Um, in your outdoor spaces, uh, you know, most of the time because connectivity has been a problem. And I think with the pandemic forcing adaptation of those sorts of things, it's, it's a blessing in disguise, really, because as much as you needed to do it for different reasons, you might now find yourself opening up to more opportunity to, to connect more with your customers and, and find more customer service time and, and restore the kind of uh, the loss, uh, you know, that we had there uh, of kind of face-to-face -face service being kind of really genuine and, and, and in-depth. So we can make proper time for things now. So I think definitely that was a great summary. And, and just to have this extra customer service opportunity available now that connectivity can provide it, 
um, particularly in outdoor spaces, I think it's, it's, it's a brilliant thing. That's a really nice message and, and one that comes out time again from our podcasts is um, small business owners saying that, you know, anything to do with technology or, or, or processes that can be fixed by technology, they want that taken away so they can focus on their customers, their core activities, selling products and services, growing their businesses. And that's that same message, which is really nice. You know, connectivity can take another problem away. Um, by fixing that, you can focus on on the customers and their experience and making sure they've they've had a good time, which I think is a really, really compelling message for our our audience. Um, Charlie, I just wanted to sort of come to you with a, a sort of final question around connectivity, I guess, which is it's kind of hard to believe this is still a problem in 2021, I guess. Um, and, and I guess you'll tell me it, it doesn't need to be a problem for small businesses anymore. Yeah, absolutely. I think the days of, you know, being able to provide guest access, being able to provide secure, reliable connections, and that being number one, very expensive, and number two, really complex to integrate, it's just gone, right? You, we, we've got solutions out there now that can be really cost effective. I mean, our, the instant on platform is is run from an app on your phone. Uh, it's really easy to do, uh, add some changes. You can just add stuff. I think you don't need a dedicated IT team and you don't need to be an expert anymore, which is great for small business owners because it gives them time to focus on what's important to them, which is their customers, right? And they don't, they don't want to be spending time managing a network, dealing with connectivity issues and doing all that stuff. They just want to kind of put something in that's super easy to get in in the first place and then super easy to keep running uh, and just kind of let that keep going on its own so they can really focus on the important stuff to them. So it's really not complex anymore. And there are a great set of solutions from from us and available to to other cus- to customers. Brilliant. Um, yes, that's a, that's a great message. And we've heard a lot about connectivity being an enabler for small businesses as they look to adapt uh, to the post-pandemic world. I wonder if I could just ask you to um, both share a, a single piece of guidance or one tip but other business owners that are looking to be adaptable, I guess, as we move into the the next period. Ollie, maybe I could start with you. What's the one sort of piece of advice you might share to to small business owners? Well, you, I mean, you touched upon this before. We've all been in that customer's shoes as well. So when it comes to small businesses that are really customer focused and trying to deliver service, I think always just put yourself in their shoes. Even in this post pandemic world, in the in the during pandemic world, keep putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Ask for feedback. You know, as well, I think it's, it's something that always goes, always goes amiss sometimes. And um, asking for feedback and putting yourself in the customer's shoes, I, I, you know, I can't you know, think of anything more relevant to a, a completely changing and adaptive world than continuously doing that, just to make sure you're not even just guessing. You know, you're just making sure that things are right because you put yourself in their shoes, you've asked for feedback, just be upfront and clear about it, have that integrity and just ask the customers. Great message. If you're in doubt as a small business owner, you know, you, you've got to ask what to do and that, they're going to be the ones who can tell you. Yeah, great message. And and, and Charlie, you know, for, you're, you're out in the field all the time talking to, to small business owners. What's the one bit of advice you find useful to give them? I think um, from a connectivity standpoint, it's it's just about getting the foundations right. I think um, think of your network and your, your kind of platform as something that can – be a platform for growth right, and can help you you fix a lot of issues that you've got. So think about, uh, make sure that you put things in that are scalable. Um, make sure you, you, you don't just kind of just jump into the cheapest thing because actually sometimes providing a little bit more thought can, can give you way more benefits and they can really become an engine for growth. Um, and I think that's one thing that I would absolutely recommend is just put something solid, reliable um, in as the, as the base layer of your network because it will pay dividends in the end for you and give you a really great platform to build all of your innovations on, um, whether that be um, outdoor spaces, whether that be um, app menus and things like that. So, yeah, that's my tip. Great stuff. And I think that's a brilliant place to begin to wrap this uh, this podcast on how small businesses can adapt to, to stay relevant in the new world. Um, I'd just like to thank both our participants, Ollie and Charlie, for, for sharing such brilliant insights um, and for making the session so useful for other small business owners. Um, I'd also like to thank Aruba and Foregone Solutions for helping make the podcast happen today. Thanks also to our audience for listening. Um, please do subscribe, as always, to the First Voice podcast to receive regular updates 
and guidance on the big issues affecting small businesses. Um, and finally, I would like to just remind you that you can find a whole host of additional webinars, podcasts, and other content relevant to small businesses on the First Voice website at firstvoice.fsb.org.uk. Many thanks. This episode is sponsored by Aruba, a Hewlett Packard enterprise company, and their partner, Forgone Solutions. Looking for a small business Wi Fi network that provides your customers with an outstanding experience? One that's easy to set up and manage with a simple app? Meet Aruba Instant On. Visit www.4gon.co.uk to find out more.